panoramic view of where we're going to do this infield gear test. That fancy project, Wilderness Adventure in Progress. A gorgeous day. Just prior to winter time, we'll have about six foot of snow up here in no time. What do you think, yeah. Sean? It'll just get more awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine trying to come here when that snows down? Oh my god! Even by snowmobile, what, what we've come over, I don't know. It would be tough. It'd be, It'd be rough. Tough. Coming up that trail on the snowmobile, I don't have that steering capability. <laughs> I know some guys are amazing, but man, I don't, I don't know. We bebopped it up some really steep and rocky terrain and hill over hill. We'll give you a little bit of inset footage of how we had to work to get to this location, right? It was killer. It was killer. Big rock fields and loose dirt. And it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Wolverine killed it. Killed it. There's our mount for the day. Doing so well in TMP. Yeah. God, that thing is just awesome. Yep. Uh, getting us to locations like this. Yeah. It's the all-around vehicle. It carries stuff and it gets anywhere you want to go. It's got enough power. It crawls. It does it all. Yeah. And we're two big guys. Yeah. Just us two alone, we're about 700 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least. <laughs> <laughs> we're pushing that half-ton truck style. <laughs> so Sean's got his BB gun. This is yep. becoming a tradition with him. Yes. So he always carries his BB gun. Then he yep. has his real gun. Yep. I do offset so I don't film your crotch. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's armed up. And then I've got the Steyr M9A1 in my cross straw. We always come armed. We mm -hmm. just do. Yeah. It's good to be armed. Yep, yep. And what were you going to say? Fairly quick on the draw. Oh, yeah, and the BB gun, you know. It's always ready to jump into action. <laughs> <laughs> on tin cans. Yep, on yeah. tin cans. Well, and I was, we were just talking about this yesterday. The awesome thing about this is all you need is a water bottle and a BB gun and a few BBs and a little tin, and you're ready to rock. Have a good time. Take the kids out and blast away. Yeah, maybe you'll see more of them in the project. I was thinking about getting one. Yeah, 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 it's a blast. And, you know, like I said, for the youngsters, it's perfect. I got, I got kids at home, and, you know, when we go out, I want to be able to do something fun out here, and uh, there's no cleanup, there's no brass, there's no noise. Yeah. I mean, it's really, uh, it's a great training tool, I think. For We did an infield review of that mm -hmm. over there on Duchesne's Bluffs. Yeah, yeah. So uh, look for that. That'll be kind of its own silly video. Yep. And we were shooting an Evil Roy with it. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yep. But we're here to test this hatchet. Yes. Uh, I bought this off Amazon. It's a Ruger black powder. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you guys an infield opinion on how it is. It's pretty high value. It's around 35 bucks. Uh, I'll put a link below if it's still there. I'm not sure if they're making it. It seems like this Ruger CRKT stuff, uh, the collaborations, they just batch produced them and then they're not making anymore. Yeah. So uh, yep. I did a Chogan review. It's a CRKT uh, hatchet. I think I did that in Wyoming. Nice. So here we are yeah. in Utah and we're going to go find some deadwood. It's just going to be uh, as we do it. No better place to come out and test. Look at this. No green screen once again, boys and girls. Oh, dude, check that log. Yeah, right there. Did you scope that already? I did not. I just discovered it just now. So right off the bat, I like that because you can hammer with it. Show them the hammering capability. Yeah. So look at the, the flat portion. I love that. So, and most hatches can do that. Mm -hmm. The Grand Spurs Brooks that I reviewed years ago uh, definitely have that. Those are kind of my standard of measure. Mm -hmm. And there's some other super high quality ones. Uh, I forget the name of them, but they're at Blade HQ. I'll put a link to those they're too. They're beautiful. Yeah, beautiful they're like axes. Swedish made axes. That, that wood hammer. Oh, and oh. The, they're sharp. Yeah. They're sharp. I don't think this is going to be like that. It's not mm -hmm. to that quality level. Level. It's just kind of a utility axe. Yeah. When you've already had to mod one part of it, right? I yeah, mean, so I put the slick. athletic tape on there because it's just so freaking slick. There's no yeah, traction at all right on here. the polymer handle. Yeah. I'm just trying to give Sean my man here. But it's cool. Some traction. Yeah. All right, uh, bust off that yeah, zipper right. tie and uh, start hacking away and give us an opinion. All right. Now, my survival system right now today in the Wolverine over there is going to be a wilderness saw and a large survival knife. I'm using the CRKT Machete, speak of the devil, you know, uh, another CRKT product. Uh, separately reviewed with Mrs. Nut and Fancy. Go watch that review. We love it. And like I said, I just threw it in the Wolverine and it's doing some work there. Look at this view. 
once again. Incredible. Okay, so pro tip. Let's see how wiggly this is because the more wiggly it is, the more energy it absorbs as you're chopping with it. Right. Now, remember when we were testing the other day? 45 degree angles or so. Same Knock deal. out some chips. Same deal. Uh, you can just hug that. We'll pick that up. Yep. All right. do, do a cross cut wherever you want and. Uh, do some limb knocking before we. Sure. So this thing is super lightweight. It's like 23 and a half ounces, I think. Pretty good. See how you're going straight there? Don't do that. Go at an angle. There you go, like that. You want to see wood chips flying. That's it. Nice. I'm going to hold this in to kind of steady it for you. All right. Okay. So this kind of testing harkens back to my old school knife testing. I did like circa 2010 to 2012. Did a lot of infield knife testing there. Really fun. Uh, it's windy, hopefully you guys can hear me. I don't have the separate mic up yet. It is what it is. Does it seem sharp to you? Not terribly. I don't, it seems like it's really obtuse. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem like it's cutting that well. Yeah. So you get a, like a Swedish ax doing that and it's gonna just cleave chips. Right. Here, let me show them something real quick. So yeah. this is what I'm talking about. Look how thick this is, this head. That's what I'm talking about. I haven't cut with it yet, but I'm just watching it. It just seems like it needs to be re-edged. Right, yeah, just right up here. It's awfully thick and, and abrupt to the to the cutting yeah. edge. So, yeah. It just feels like you're kind of beating on the wood. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not really biting. That's what I'm looking at. It just seems like, like you're saying, it's just pommeling it. Even if you angle it, it's not helping much, is it? Not really. I think if you re-edged it, it would be money. Sharpen it, back that relief edge up some. Here, let me spell you out. Give you a break. So this is just a lightweight woods axe. It's not really meant to be doing what we're doing with it at all. This is like for splitting kindling, hammering a tent stake. Yeah, it's it's like we're talking about. That edge sucks. It's horrible. Really a bad edge. I think if you, uh, yeah, you brought that edge back. Maybe even put a convex edge on it. You might get better results than this. It can do it, but it's not clean at all. See that? It should be chipping yeah. right there with that angle. See this? So you can see how it's like squashing the fibers of the wood. It's not cutting them. This side it did, but when you're when it's cutting this way, it just looks like it's crushing them. The grain of the wood, I should say.
See, one thing I like about the Swedish axis that this isn't doing for me. See how when I do precise work, you can actually get one of those Grand Forest Brooks and you do these light chops. I mean, this is kind of doing it, but it really peels up. It just like shaves the wood because they're so sharp. And they're heat treated really well too. Good steel. So we're on a slope here, so it's kind of awkward. What kind of steel does this have? Does it say on the back of the package? Let's see. I would imagine a 1090. Oh, I don't see it on here. So if they're not burning. Oh, no, wait, there, maybe it, yeah, it says blade is uh, 1055 carbon steel. Okay, 1055 then. Yep. I think 1055 is pretty decent at holding its edge once you yeah, put it on there, it's right? Good steel. Yeah. Spring steel. It's decent. There you go. I mean, I still like the axe. I'm not going to say this is a crappy axe. Mm -hmm. This is it's a decent axe. Just needs to be re-edged, re I think. Yeah. I mean, the weight is nice. It's not. It's not real heavy. Right. And the swing is good too. It has a real good balance to it. Um. Thinking if I'm going to cross cut and then log split with this. I don't know if I want to go to that much work. <laughs> to be totally I do. With you guys. I do have a pocket saw that well, we I've could. I've got my full on. Yeah. Freaking trail buddy with me. So we could make a couple of logs to split with it to see how it does. That thickness and it looks like it's got a little bit of a ramp to it. So yeah, it's probably be a good a splitter. Okay, so uh, I'll go fetch my saw. Okay. Let's cut it like right here, in here, and we'll see if it splits. Cool. See what happens. Back in a minute. <laughs> Coming out of the Wolverine, a 15 inch Saw Viver, longer version. This is the survival saw that I keep in the UTV for cutting through logs on the trail. If we get stuck overnight and for stuff like this, supporting cast member. So this is what I'd use to go through a log. Yeah. Like I've said a bazillion times. I mean, I'm not going to use a hatchet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's brutal. Yeah. Brutal. No, not doing that. <laughs> so I don't have my WD-40 super handy. It's buried in all the gear in the Wolverine. I'm just putting some Militech lube on it. That'll work just as well. And off we go. Wondering if I should saw this one. I think I'll go through this one. We were going to do that, but that one's detached. So it's going to rotate. Let me go tighter on this sucker. Really tension your blade up. Now, saw viver was discontinued. Then I heard it's coming back. I really don't know what the status is on it. Uh, I've given you some other survival saw options like the Wyoming saw, which is fantastic. The Sven saw, fantastic. Uh, this one has always been my favorite because of its rectangular plan form. You can see why. It just has a lot of clearance for the wood. I'm going through what about a six, seven inch log right now. This blade's new, so it's cutting really good. This is how you cross cut the saw. <laughs> so I guess this will turn into a refresher on the saw viver. <laughs> right. It just works. Yeah. It's Look at yeah, that. Beautiful. No messing around with a saw viver or Sven or Wyoming saw. The mm. only one I'm not super fond of is the uh, 
silky saw, <laughs> which he has. That's why he's laughing. Because they just, they bind up and you mm -hmm. can break the blade. I've busted them out here. Uh, I mean, they're good for, you know, just a, a, an emergency saw. Yeah. The two-point supporting of the blade is really yeah. key to keeping those things in shape. Blade saws, whether it's by Gerber or Silky, I'm just like, no. Yeah. No, they're hokey. Because you, you bind them up when you're in a hurry and you break the blade or bend it. Okay, buddy. Good luck trying to cut this. <laughs> Let's go up here to split it and then we get better scenery up here. We keep it rolling. All right. I think this is going to be interesting because I don't think it's going to do that good. That's my prediction is that this ain't going to do so good. It's going to get stuck in the log and you're going to have to bang it out with another baton or something. Let's give it every opportunity to succeed. Put some oil on it. This thing is super cheap though. It is. This is an inexpensive axe. And I think for an emergency axe, especially if you, I shouldn't say axe, I should say hatchet. Sorry if I'm interchanging those terms. For an emergency hatchet, I think it's fine. And it's not that heavy, like we've been talking about. So these are my fabricator gloves that I absolutely love. I just use them all the time now in the Wolverine. It's kind of like, Cowboys used to have the gauntleted, yeah. gauntleted gloves. I feel the same way because they protect your hand and they just wear so long. Right. They're you don't tough. Wear them out. Those are tough gloves. They're yeah. tough. Right. Ooh. It's better than I thought it would be. This is what I was talking about, just getting it in there. I probably need to cut a baton for us. Let me see if I can get a good whack at this. There's some knots in here, so it's not gonna split straight. There's no way it can. It's doing pretty good. Not bad. It's not bad. Also, leather protects your hands a little bit better when you're doing blade work. This not this wood is so naughty. As in K and <laughs> I knew what you were thinking. I knew what you were thinking. Naughty wood. Always out here in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, I really, I still need a baton. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go cut one real quick. You can come with me. Back into the action with the saw viver. Look at this day, dude. Yeah. Give him a pan that way, too, how beautiful it is. Look at that valley back there. Yep. Boy, I really like this longer one too. Yeah. These things are so lightweight for their capability. Like a portable chainsaw. Yeah. The amount of calories that you save by carrying that thing around totally. is immense. Totally. Oh. 
So I would not integrate a hatchet into my uh, into my BOK. There, no way. 23 ounces is light for the Wolverine. Four man portable. No thank you. Not doing it. This is where a large survival knife is better. See my problem here? So the head gets buried, and now, unless I can expose the head, I can't really keep batoning with it. You with me? Right. But a large survival knife, I can. If my purpose is to cut longitudinally through a thick limb or a small log. Which in the winter time becomes crucial. Right? Exactly, you're getting to the dry wood. Now it's dry, it's like no big deal. We got all kinds of firewood up here now. Check in about two months, we'll see what's up. We're hitting that knot. All right, I'm gonna let you split this. All right. I'll take over. If you want, you can put some more lube on it. Oh, we'll just try it as it is. That's what she said. <laughs> Here, turn sideways and I'll get the background. <laughs> I, I ain't holding it for you. No, no, no. <laughs> this particular wood just will not split straight, guys. So, just there's so many knots in it. We're just going to be taking planks off the side, I think, is our best shot. Yeah. Now, I've been trying to turn Sean onto watches, and he ain't biting. <laughs> he still wears this totally adequate Casio. I don't want to advertise yeah. that. It's just some generic Casio. That's cool. <laughs> But you should have something fun. Today it's a Torpedo 44 with a nothing fancy hands mod on it by Momentum, link below. So I put a decal in it, freaking gloves. Hang on a second. There you go, right there. Making me happy today. Timing bezel, made the seconds hand orange. And I'll tell you what, after I modded it, I, I love wearing this watch. Yeah. Yeah. And the hands were fine the way they came, but they're just a lot better. You know, solid white, starkness. What do yep. you think? You're going to turn into a watch guy on me? You know, I, Never, I, I huh? do, see, I like watches. I'm just a very, very first cool guy with watches. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm only going to wear one. <laughs> I'm not doing, the, not doing the two watch system. No, so. you need to do a 20 watch system. <laughs> 20 watch. Look at this view over here, dudes. Nothing fancy. I love this video. You need to do more like this. Yeah. We're trying. See how it's not like yeah, it doesn't taking penetrate. a bite right off? That's that, that jacked up grind it's got on it. Yeah. See, it should stick in the wood when you do that. You do that with a Grand Sport Brooks, dude. It's gonna bite yeah. right into that thing. But then again, it's four or five times the price. It's an ex more expensive <laughs> hatchet or ax, depending on which one you get. Out. See, you're you're screwed now because yeah, you've lost your fat, lost the whole thing, the flat base. Yep. But here we're seeing again another advantage of a large survival knife, where you can yep. do precision work. You don't necessarily need a flat base to strike on, right? Right. No, I'm sold on the large survival knives. <laughs> <laughs> And again, I'm faulting a lot of it on the wood. The wood's just yeah, this is wood what is, it is awful. I think it's spruce. Oops. This is just dry spruce. Oh yeah, do that.
I just don't feel like I can get a good bite out of this thing. I agree. That's, just, that's the problem. We'll call it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good hatchet. It really is. Um, it's not bad at all, but it just needs to be reground. Yeah. The edge on it is horrible. Yep. I it, do like that. I mean, it's very, very nice to have that weight all right where you want it. Good it's swing. Not one of these big fat heads and uh, good swing. Uh, the skateboard tape definitely needs some traction on that handle. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like you said, put a good grind on it and it'll be great. So that's a Ruger CRKT black powder hatchet. 1055 steel, needs to be re-edged to bite better. Yeah. Most everything else is pretty good. Up here. Yeah, yeah if, if grind you could put a really sh sharp edge on that, I think it would do so much better. Yep. But 1055 steel, durable. Black powder coated, about 23 and a half ounces, poly handle. Yep. Like we're saying, we need to put some uh, traction on there i just used athletic tape on it yep. yeah would you buy that uh yeah the price is right the price it's is cheap right. yeah just yeah. to throw in a duffel i'd re-edge yep. it and throw it in a duffel like in a, yeah your utv i still go with the saw viver large survival knife for all the reasons i've said over the years yep. but if you need to hammer take one of those yes that's yeah. that is superior for hammering like tent tent stakes you're setting up a tent mm -hmm. hammer it in this stuff yeah now you're talking. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, this having a nice flat surface, that's one thing that the large survival knives just lack. That's right. But uh, but other than that, yeah, the large survival knife, it really gets the work done. I like those. Yeah, and that hammering can come in handy too in anything mechanical where you need a hammer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't carry a hammer in the Wolverine and there right. might be some type of mechanical issue where we wish we had one. Which is a great point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something like this in the Wolverine when you're not man portable, I mean, throw it in there. Yeah. Absolutely. It's cheap. It's light. Just throw it in your Use jeep it. your truck yeah absolutely and then you do have a backup if for some reason your large survival blade were to have something happen to it you know you lose it you chip it out whatever it's not working and then you have a backup so, now if we had a cash right here we would cash this blade for our tmp donors mm -hmm. but i don't have a way to keep it rust free right especially not for the next uh, six months <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, we're li literally at the last <laughs> week when this whole area is going to shut down they won't even won't even allow access anymore yep Yep. All right. Thanks for the help, Sean. Appreciate yes, it. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me out. You bet. Epic That's adventure. Awesome. Uh, Infield review of the CRKT Ruger pot black powder. All these they have powder keg, black powder. I get them all confused. It's the black powder hatchet. One last look at this beautiful scenery. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a donor. The adventure continues after all these years. New horizons like this one in play. Done.